Hey guys, what do we got today? We got the rake P671. Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, LTK here. Got this knife on a trade, on a partial trade. Uh, swapping knives, you know how it goes. And uh, he said, hey, you interested in that new rake knife? The P671 front flipper? And I go, yeah, I mean, I'd like to check it out. I'd like to take a look at it and stuff. So I've had this for several weeks now and just hadn't got around to sitting down putting it on camera it's a small knife it's not a very big knife look at the start out by just looking at this profile here that's i mean really that's a kind of a i like that design is what i'm trying to spit out here i like the design i really do that blade shape is nice actually it looks to have almost a mirror edge on that thing doesn't it it's nice it's small it's kind of a i guess it's a satin um and this is carbon fiber but i think it's i think it's a g10 laminate carbon fiber thing some people just absolutely hate it i think it's nice and showy yet it's durable like g10 so i think it's kind of the best of both worlds especially for an inexpensive knife I mean, this is not an expensive knife. Um, I, and I only have paperwork from uh, Rake right now on this knife. I don't see it on... Uh, I, I didn't see it on White Mountain Knives, and so I didn't get it from them. Like I said, I got it on a trade. Deep carry pocket clip here. Right hand tip up. Can you go left hand? No. Apparently not. Now it's got a steel backspacer here that's integrated with a lanyard hole what do you think it's interesting it's got these big old frog eye kind of thumb studs on it it's a liner lock the liners are pretty thick and there's your lockup which is pretty hardy almost 50 percent you have a great pass-through area and you have a lot of jimping here so you can disengage the liner like that. I mean, you can use these thumb studs to open the knife either, you know, with your thumb or with your middle finger from the backside. Nice choil, by the way, here for sharpening. So that's nice. And, of course, you've got this front flipper, which this is the way I do it. It's just... I'm I'm not a big front flipper. Who is it? Jernigan did the the design of the Wakula knife, which is the Kaiser uh, Wakula, and I think I saw that on sale somewhere recently. In any case, that's the only front flipper I'm really a big fan of because you can just do it from here. Uh, it's it's really nice. You don't do it like that, and you know. I'm not really that big into the real steel front flippers either. But in any case, yeah, this one, you can. Come on, give it to me. So, yeah, I don't prefer that. I just, I'll, I'll punch it out like that or just use the thumb stud and flip it like that. So as far as I'm concerned, here's the problem I have with this knife so far. Take the front flipper off. Just, I mean, that, that'd that be just a cleaner look on that knife in any case. And these are so user-friendly anyhow. Pretty good detent, which I don't want a real stiff detent with a front flipper. The Kaiser Wakula does not have that stiff a, a detent. So it's much easier to deploy and the front flipper is at a different position so you can actually reach around and deploy that. But I mean I like the design once it's open. It's cool but here's here's one thing for sure. Check this out. 
It's almost six tenths of an inch thick. 14.7 millimeters. Let's see what the blade stock is. That's probably ridiculous too. Now it's only about 3.4 millimeter. Okay, so it just seems to me for no tall and well, let's just get the measurements so we can know what we're working with here. But it's under three inch blade, two and three quarter inch blade. So maybe 70 millimeters at best. Six and a half inches overall, 16 and a half millimeters, I mean, centimeters. So not even a three inch blade. Where are you, Rex? Get out of here. You. Okay. See what I'm saying? And in this aspect ratio, this rake should look all it can be, you know, because if you flip it around, it's going to look even smaller in comparison to the uh, paramilitary too. So much, much smaller knife, but look at the thickness. Much thicker. Now, blade stock about the same. I think these are supposed to be 3.7 uh, millimeters. Yeah. So this one's a little bit less. Let me see. 3.46. So a little thinner blade stock, but doesn't look a whole lot thinner. And overall, 0 0.45, 0 0.57. Just for, for a knife that's under a three inch blade, I'm sorry, I want this knife thinner, thinner. Blade stock, maybe three millimeters, like an eighth inch. And then take the thickness of this. You know, you could embed these steel liners inside this G10 like they do, like on this knife, right? The steel liners on this Best Tech Paladin are just embedded inside, even though it's a liner lock, which it is, right? So you could do that here. You would take that much thickness out of that. And I'm not sure. Well, yeah. And, and then the scales could be okay. You would just bring this whole thing in. This backspacer would be a lot thinner. Blade stock thinner. Everything could come in. So it would be thinner. And maybe lighter. Because I don't think this thing's any real light duty. Little blessing either. At 3.7, I mean, this thing could be three, maybe under three a little bit. And you know what? If you took off sort of a chunk, I'm going to change this whole knife. But if you sawed off that whole chunk of steel there, thinned out the blade, I mean, yeah, throw it back on here. Let's go to uh, grams. 104.7. I mean, that's, that's not a lot of weight for a knife. But it's kind of a lot of weight for a 2.2 2 and 3 quarter inch bladed knife. It's just thick. I mean, look at it's weight relieved inside. I mean, they're doing it top and bottom in there. And that's just to get it under four. There's no way this should be four. I mean, the bug out's what, under two? And then a lot of small knives are just a hell of a lot uh, lighter. And this one's, I mean, this one's a hog, right? Compared, because this cut jack is a small cut jack, but it's a bigger knife, bigger blade. Let's see what we got for, uh, and let's just go back to, uh, I don't know, I'm really uh, dwelling on this, but I mean, seriously, there you go. Technically under three ounces. I mean, this is just, and which one, which knife is the bigger knife? So, yes, this blade stock is thinner. The knife is thinner. The liners are embedded in the scales. I'm just telling you, I, you know, I just, you kind of wonder, here's what, I mean, I'm just going to drive me crazy, but... What a nice design this is. If you just look at this knife, what a nice design it is. 
Uh, I mean, the ergos are really good. Can I cut a piece of paper? Where have we got a piece of paper over here that's been cut on a bunch? Yeah, and 14C, 28, and Sandvik steel, so that's good. I mean, I really like the design of this knife. And I think you could keep those thumb studs. That's fine. And the way they are positioned is way up here. So you have a lot of room between the scale and the thumb studs to get your thumb in there and flip it open. You don't need that front flipper. It's just, to me, it's just a hump that's sticking up out of here. I don't like it. Now you take that off, you thin this whole knife down, you get it down to 2.9 ounces. <sighs> you got yourself a knife now. One that you can throw in your pocket that's, that's light. This feels like a chunk of change, you know, the way it is. So do you want a short but fat, thick, and heavy for its proportional size knife? If you do, this is really, I would recommend this knife. Absolutely, I would. Because I really like the design of it. Let me get the rake paperwork out here. What do they say this, the weight is? Yeah, 3.67 ounces. They ain't wrong on that one. Uh, 2.76 inch blade, flat grind, 14C, 28N. Ah, what were they saying for the price on this? It was like, like 39 bucks or something. It wasn't bad. You know, so it, it's not a bad price on this knife. And I could be wrong on the 39 It might be 42 Somewhere in there. It's not $60 knife or anything like that. But, uh, so, hey, I mean, yeah, G10 overlay. Okay. Carbon G10 with carbon fiber overlay. That's what I thought. I don't know. I guess I'm going to quit bitching and moaning, but just I think they really had such a potential on this knife to do something. Where's the model number in case you're interested? P671 CB carbon fiber overlay, yeah, as they say it. Um, too bad. Too bad. Actually, if you don't mind the weight, and I, eh, I mean, I know, 3.67. So, I mean, if you're wearing jeans or normal type pants and stuff, this is nothing to carry. But if you're looking for a small, lightweight carry, well then, you know, I mean, this is me. This may even be a little large and heavy for some people's taste, but this is almost an ounce lighter and it's a bigger knife. So, I mean, that's, that's insane. And then I think this is only, I think this is even lighter. And this is a full-size knife, this Manix Ultralight. <laughs> just for kicks. Let's belabor the point. Let's just completely obsess. 2.8, right? This is a full ounce lighter, okay? And you've got a lot of knife there. See what I'm saying? It's just, it's just craziness. It's just too much weight. It's too much weight. Too fat. Too fat, too thick. Beautiful design. Don't like the front flipper. I mean, I remember Tony out in California. He was a <clears throat> mater. Tony ba Mater, he, he was saying... I about stabbed my dog. I think he was playing with a front flipper. And he goes, I just, I'm just, because your purchase on the knife is not really that good when you're flicking it as a front flipper. And he goes, the knife just flew out of my hands uh, when I flipped it open because you don't necessarily have a real great grip on it in that position. And about stabbed my dog. <laughs> Probably scared him. You know what I'm saying? So, uh but what a, what a look from this profile. I think that's just an excellent profile right there. With modifications, this could be a really cool small knife to carry. Actually, it'd look good in a bigger size too. So, oh well. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to tell knife makers what to do. Right, Flanagan. But... You just wonder sometimes, don't you? I mean, that's just what drives me crazy is they come out, they hit, 
you know, seven out of 10 good points. And then they, and then you kind of wonder, what were they thinking? Let's make it tip down only, you know, Carrie, let's take the bearings out of it and put just regular steel washers in it or nylon washers, or let's, you know, make it too fat, too thick, too heavy, you know, too something. Um, it's just, you just wonder sometimes, what, what are you doing? It's not that difficult. And you know what would be nice? If they would just come out with a basic design like this and throw it up on Instagram and go, what, you know, what would you want to do? I mean, Best Tech's doing that to a, to a degree. They're sending them in to the U.S. and there's a group of, of people, including I think Stasa 23, that kind of gets a peak, and I've had a peak, uh, at, at some prototypes going and I put them on the channel, right? And it's great when they go, what do you think? And then they make them in small batches so they can change the design going forward and materials. So I like that responsiveness. I just, uh, you can't, I, I just think it's ridiculous to not ask, not get a little bit of synergy going with people who are consumers that know what they want. Give them what they want. This is something they just made and decided this is what it's going to be. And you know, you live or die by it. I think it's not going to be a terribly popular model because of those shortcomings. Basic design, form and function are good, but they missed, uh, they missed the big picture of what a small knife is supposed to be. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, I appreciate it. You know what we do around here. We love them knives. And we like most rake knives. This one? No, 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 no. Not for me. And you guys stay sharp. Thanks.